you're busy, but I'd like a beer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Make it two. I got enough dirt in my craw to cause a landslide. This town's pretty quiet. It's always like this. We serve drinks, not gab. No harm meant. We're just looking for a fellow by the name of Joe Bruder. You know him? It's two beers. That's 20 cents. Let's start all over again. Randy Bruder's a friend of ours. We're looking for his paw. You know where we can find him? If you want Randy's paw, you have to find him. I ain't his keeper. Thank you. Bartender's an example of the people of this town. I don't think I'm gonna like it here. Yeah. Hold it down. As quiet as it is around here, I got a feeling that we're being listened to and watched. Yeah, well, I got a feeling we gotta get on our horses and get out of here. I thought this whole idea of yours was crazy to begin with. Go ahead. It's my doing, so I'll see it through. <laughs> Have a chance without me. Your odds aren't much better with me along, but I'll stick around. Let's go outside and take another look around more. Mr. Bruder. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Bruder, we're looking for a mite older than you are. Hey, wait a minute. He must be one of Randy's brothers, either Cass or Willie. He was always talking about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Patty. Nobody sent for you and nobody wants you around. Why don't you just get back on your horses and get? Now. Or a little sooner. <laughs> well, they, they're they Randy's brothers, all right. You know, he, he was always saying there was no way to ever sneak yeah, up on him, catch yeah. him unawares. Yeah. We rode a long way to see Randy's paw, and that's what we're going to do. You're going to be stubborn, huh? Well, stubborn and get you shot. So you better get. And I mean now. You being a mite hasty, ain't you? My boys ain't too mannerly. Seems to me that the polite thing is to at least ask a man's name before we run him out of town. I'm uh, Bud York. I love Leroy, Gabe Leroy. Jake Marley, my bartender up the street, said you two look for me. You, uh, Joe Bruder? Well, that's who you're looking for, eh? Boys, uh, you know, it's a uh, plum rude for you to uh, treat a stranger like this. And you, 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 you didn't even ask their names. We didn't have to, Pa. They said they were friends of Randy's, but we figured they might be lying. You couldn't figure your way out of an empty rain barrel. My boy says a little hot-headed. They're always trying to protect me. Hope you won't hold that against him. No, no, no. It ain't good for the soul to hold a grudge. You want a flapper? We can go up to my place. It's some cooler. Fine, whatever, whatever you like. Yeah. Take care of their horses. This way. your names. But he never did say just what you had to do with the trouble he's in. Uh, if you're his friends, uh, I figure you want to tell me. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, see, <clears throat> me and old Gabe here, we ran into Randy over at Pineville. 
and we was sort of sitting around chewing the fat and having a drink or two, and, and old Randy had him a great notion. All right, hold it there. All right, it's coming now. I'm going to tell you when to drop it. Where you want us, Randy? Why'd you take it over there, uh, back here with me, Leroy? Okay, now. All right, hold it. Don't make any mistakes. Boy, where'd that come from? Now come out of there with your hands up. All right, everybody out. Just nobody will move and nobody will get hurt. You say Randy took the money belt from a man bigger than him. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he's way bigger. He's bigger than old Buddy. Hmm? Yeah, oh, yeah. That makes me proud. <laughs> I tell you, that boy, he, he don't know the meaning of fear. No, he doesn't. He kept... Uh, what? He kept telling me that uh, he wanted to do things on his own. <laughs> you know, a man uh, can't fault a boy for wanting to leave home. I, I don't approve of killing, though. That gets you into rope trouble. Right around the neck. Yeah, well, Randy didn't kill that driver. It was just a flesh wound. Yeah, Nick, Nick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Randy said. But uh, hearing you say it takes the weight off my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to get this place uh, cleaned up, uh, Look at that dust. Uh, one of these days, uh, I might just have a customer. My living quarters is upstairs. Salt wants a decent place to live. And uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't have a few comforts uh, if he's smart enough to get them. Well, sit, 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 sit down, sit down. Just uh, make yourselves at home. One thing uh, you didn't mention how much was in the money belt. Well, uh, didn't Randy tell you about that? It could be I just remember, that's why I'm asking. Well, it was 51000 Fair piece of money. <laughs> Worth drinking to? Oh, thank you. You know, it seems to me that I did hear that figure once before. But one thing else you didn't mention. If y'all got away so slick, how come Randy got herself thrown in the Virginia City Jail? Well, uh, we can just tell you what we heard, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, I see, uh... You see, when, when, when Randy didn't show up at the meeting place, and we, we naturally were concerned about it, and, uh... We just started asking around. Yeah, just riders and freighters and such as that. Uh, we didn't want to get that close to Virginia City, you see. Uh, it turns out the man the man that Randy stole the money from well, wasn't as dumb as he looked. And then the next thing you know, Randy was in the Virginia City jail. I swear that boy was born on an unlucky star. Did you hear when he goes to trial? Well, it'll probably be a 
week and a half to two weeks. As soon as the circuit judge gets there. Stage robbing. Nobody really heard. They shouldn't go too hard on a gentle boy like Randy. He's a wonderful boy. You know, you know that, that, that he didn't say a word about where the money was? Oh, that makes me feel proud. I raised him right. <laughs> yeah. He did say that he gave it to you. That's what you said. I ain't saying a word. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you see, Mr. Bruder, old Gabe and me figure that two-thirds of that money's ours. Oh, man, but Buck and I did work for it. Yeah. I'd hate to think that, that Randy's father would cheat his partners. Joe Bruder never cheated nobody, do you hear? Just uh, don't, don't push at me. I gotta ponder on this. I, I'm a man that likes to think on things. Uh, just uh, leave me alone. You can uh, hang around if you like. We, uh, we talk later. You think he believes us? Yeah, but not only ask us about the money. I think he's going to keep on asking questions, stalling. For a man, two sons in the bar, trying to get some more stashed around. Mr. Bruder's a weird old goat, isn't he? Yeah. Imagine him thinking his kid's just an honest, hard-working young boy. Yeah. As I recall, his partners didn't think that. Double-crossed us. We've been sitting here for three days. He's off somewhere laughing his head off. Don't just sit there. Say something. I'll say it. Put your hands up. You're the one on the stage. Hold it. Keep an eye on him. Sure. How bad is it? Bad. All right, buddy. Where's the money? Might as well tell us, because you ain't going to live to spend it. Is that bad, huh? That's right. You're going fast. Where is it? I, I uh, guess I better then. Never even got to smell that money. You know, Randy, he took it over to his pa and his brothers so they could watch it. So we could split it up. Where? A ghost town over on Windflat. How many brothers? Two of them. Cass. And Willie. I never even never seen him. I never even seen Randy till the night before the holdup. What's your name? Why well, I'm saying have my name on my grave. I never had my name on nothing before. You carve it real nice, huh? Gabe Leroy? Ah. Uh. All right. Leroy, get up on your feet. Come on. I'm a, I'm a mortal wounded man. I can't get up. There ain't nothing wrong with you except a little flesh wound, a big scare. Now, get up. Come on. You tricked me. Something like that. Come on, let's get him to the sheriff. Yeah, hey, Bill, take him back to that lion shack. Keep him tied up when we get back. Right. What are you talking about? Get back? From where? We're going after that money. Oh, no, Hoss. No, on. not Hoss. The name is York, Leroy. York, Leroy. What about him? Well, first off, Paul, uh, maybe get Get eating all the red ones. Uh, maybe Cass and me uh done a dumb thing in trying to run York and Leroy out of town. But we know why they come. They want that money. Why not? The Randy's partners, ain't they? Fair's fair, ain't it? Not with Randy stuck in jail. He can't spend it. Why should they? That's right, Pa. We don't know them nothing. Now, Cass and me, were your own flesh and blood, not them. You want to give away that money? Well, that's fine, but you give it to us. Look. Look. Randy did the thinking. York and Leroy helped do the work. And you two are grabbing with both hands. 
you had your say. I'll keep it in mind. I don't know who made this beer, but they must have left the soap in it. Mm -hmm. Sure, don't take much of that to get all the man wants, does it? Uh -huh. They forgot. Two beers. Yeah, yeah, we know. 20 cents. Canteens and bedrolls, they're heading out. Yeah. There's two more of them we don't have to worry about. Yeah. What it comes right down to is this. I have to be paid if I'm going to take your case. Cash. No promises. Well, my pa will pay you. Fine. Send him over to my office. I don't live in Virginia City. When that lawyer finishes in there, let him out. I want to get a cup of coffee and something to eat. Paul here. Somebody will tell him and I who come a-running with the money in his hand. When he does, send him to my office. Deputy. All right. Bixley's a good lawyer. Too bad he won't help you. He will. He changed his mind. He's coming back. It, no, it, it ain't like my boys to ride out without saying a word. Well, you know, they haven't exactly been too friendly towards us. I have a feeling they don't want you to give us our fair share of the hold-up money. Why, Mr. LaRoy, I do believe you're trying to trap an old man. I ain't ever said that I had any hold-up money. Uh, you ain't said you didn't, either. Well, then I ain't said nothing at all, have I? <laughs> but uh, I am thinking on it, and uh, things is beginning to fall into place. Uh, tonight or tomorrow morning, just about do it. Look, Mr. Bruder, it's our money. Now, there ain't no need in holding us up. Well, do you want a quick answer, or do you want the right one? Uh, just hold on, bud. I mean, we've got no complaints so far. Mr. Root has been very nice, and uh, I think it's just that he's a... he's just a methodical man. T tonight will be just fine. Yes, sir, Mr. Leroy. C call me Gabe. Gabe. And I like that word. Methodical. That's me. And you have a very discerning eye. You know, uh, it helps my thinking every once in a while to just ride out and let the... Wind blows the smell of this place off me. Uh, you just make yourselves at home. I won't be gone long. Come on. Just to blow the smell off of him, he better hope for a tornado. <laughs> yeah. You know, by my count, I think there's just three of us left in town. You, me, and the bartender. Yeah. Could be a trap. It could be, but I don't think so. He did say make ourselves at home. <laughs> Check the other room. in Denver. Well, you see the other stuff we got, boss. Biggest haul we've made in months. A and no trouble. Nah, the freight wagon's right where you said it'd be. I need a drink. Well, you aren't it. Go get it. Everybody, go get it! Hey, the 
friends of mine. Just go on with your drinking. You. Have one on the house. Oh, thank you. May I say, see where you get all your customers? Uh, <laughs> kind of a, a mutual back scratching. I, I, I pay them well, but I get it all back. Uh, they'll go on celebrating like this all night. <laughs> uh, speaking of night, it ain't but just a couple hours till dark. Here do you come again, Mr. Nudging me about that money that I haven't said that I had. How's the uh, with all this wagon load of stuff, I'd be mighty selfish to hog it all to myself. Counting chickens uh, ain't always a good idea. But... Oh, Clem, come on. Afternoon, Ben. I got bad news for you. Randy Bruder broke out of jail. It was my fault. I'm not proud, but I can't deny it either. We lost his tracks miles back. Mm -hmm. I figured I'd better get right over here and warn you. Randy knows Hoss is the only witness against him. Yeah. Well, Hoss and little Joe and Bill White are looking for the other two somewhere around Pineville. Pineville? That's halfway to Wind Flats. Randy's home. His folks used to live there. Well, it's only a ghost town now. Well, Randy'd know that territory pretty well, wouldn't he? You bet he would. I think it's worth a look. All right, Randy. Is that you, Mr. York? Yeah. Well, come on up. Looks like us three's the only sober ones in town. Yeah, we, uh, we noticed that, Mr. Broder. <laughs> well, you just make yourself home. You didn't join him. How come? Because you said you was going to split up the money and we took your word for it. It's time. The black one. Well, my word is good. And the clock has run out on me. You know, it hasn't been an easy decision, all that money. But even so, I think I wouldn't have slept right if I hadn't done the right thing by Randy's partners. Neither would we. <laughs> <laughs> but 51,000 pile of money. Look, I think we ought to talk about it first. Well, uh, what, 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 what is there to talk about? Well, about divvying up. Let's see, uh, three shares at 15,000 apiece, uh, and that leaves 6,000 over. That ought to go to Randy on account of he's in jail. Well, I, I guess that's fair enough. Well, of course it's fair. And then there's me. Care taking the money all this time. I ought to get something for that. Oh, yeah. Say 2,000 apiece out of your shares. Yeah. That leaves on. That's th uh, thir 13,000. That's right. And you are a bright boy. <laughs> Thank you. 13. An unlucky number. So how about 12 for each of you? Well, it's good. It's an even dozen. Done. It is a pleasure to do business with you. Now, you boys, listen to reason. Gabe, would you take hold of that? Hmm? Mr. Yeah, uh, Mr. York. Yes, sir. Now, lift. Easy. And away she goes. putting it in there. Nobody up to now. <laughs> Hold it, Pa. Not yet. Well, where in thunder have you been? Where have I been? I've been to Pineville. Now, that's the place that these two louts claim to come from. That is, if they're Bud York and Gabe Leroy. And now we're going to find out one way 
or another. Cass! Paul, I want you to meet Mrs. Bud York. gonna hurt you. So you just spit it out. Now, you ain't never seen these two fellas before, have you? Two years and it's come to this. Two long years of marriage, hoping you'd keep just one of your promises. And knowing all the time you wouldn't. Scratching for a dollar and then watching you drink it up. <coughs> Two long years of hell! Oh, Bud, where have you been? Well, I, uh... Why, well, I, I didn't mean to. I was... I was... You're wrong again, ain't you? Trying to cheat your own brother's friends. Now, would you take hold of this? And you, with this hand, take hold of that. And would you put the money belt downstairs in the safe? Uh, get, get out of my sight, both of you. You and your stupid scheme. Oh, shut up! You ought to be so ashamed of yourself. Sweet little girls like this is hard to come by. But don't you worry, Mrs. York. Happy days are ahead for you. No, no more scratching for a dollar, let me tell you that. Heck, I'll, I'll go along with that, Mr. Bruder. Why, why don't we uh, get the money out of the safe and split it up, and we'll, we'll be on our way to Pineville. Well, is that all you can think of, Leroy? Getting your grabby hands on that loot? Oh, Haven't you got a passing thought of charity and kindness for this delicate and weary woman. You'd have her go all the way to Pineville tonight? Never. Hey, <laughs> look at old Bud there. <laughs> he ain't got any more romance in him than a croaking tree toad. <laughs> a man and his wife ought to be together, especially when they haven't seen each other for a spell. Yeah. Uh, you two will have my bedroom tonight. Gabe. Huh? You and me will sleep out here. Uh, that sofa's right comfortable. I'll take the chair. Miss York, you'll like my bedroom just fine. You see, my boys got most of my furniture from a freight wagon just loaded with hotel supplies. Thank you. Well, come on. Uh, Mr. Bruder, I... Now, there's no need to thank me. I, I was young once. You no, know, I wish my wife had lived. She would have caught me to my bedroom. <laughs> kind of makes you feel good, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I bet they got just a million things to talk about. Oh, I, I bet they do. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, ma'am, I sure ain't. I mean, no, ma'am, I sure ain't. Well, big man, I think it's time you said something. Yeah, right in my head. First of all, ma'am, you saved our hides out there, and I want you to know I appreciate it. But I want to know why. Well, since uh, Bud and me was married, he he never left me alone for so much as a day. 
always around, you know, uh, mean and suspicious. He never left me of his own accord, not for three whole weeks. So I, I reckon he's gone. <sighs> Someday maybe I'll, I'll try to shed a tear for him. A wife should do that much, I guess. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, big man. So, why'd I pretend you was Bud? Well, maybe because I'm ornery. That uh, Willie and Cass, they ain't nice. They practically forced me to come with them. It, uh, it pleasured me to make fools of them. <laughs> Besides, uh, why give you away till I know which way the wind is blowing? Yeah, but you run a mighty gamble. There's two of us. You think the other one, the good-looking one, would have been married to the likes of me? Sure, I took a chance, but not on the man. Oh, so you, uh, you just chose the ugly one, right? I won't deny it. Now that I see you close up, ugly ain't the right word. Your eyes ain't ugly, and, and you ain't got no ugly lines around your mouth. Well, uh, ma'am, the light ain't too good in this room, but I appreciate you saying it anyhow. But if you're up to no good, passing yourself off as Bud, I, I can change my mind mighty quick. A loud scream will bring those brooders on the run. Something tells me I won't be screaming. Well, thank goodness. But, ma'am, you made the right choice, and I'll tell you why. You see, it all started about five weeks ago. And we'd had this big cattle drive, see, and, and I had all the sale money on me. It belongs to a lot of nice folks. And I was on the stagecoach with it, and... Well, I should have guarded it better, but I didn't. Fact is, I was dozing. And while I was dozing... <laughs> Well, me and my little brother Joseph was just about ready to lay our hands on that money when Kaz and Willie and you showed up. Well, what made you back off? You could have still jumped them. Well, you was with them, ma'am. You, you might have got hurt. You and your brother. Joe, you said? <sighs> there ain't many in the world like you. At least, not in my world. Oh. You best quit calling me ma'am. You do that with them around and... Well... My name's Katie. Katie? <laughs> well, ma'am, Katie, that has a nice ring to it. And speaking of ring, you got a nice wallop, too. <laughs> well, I figured I had to, that Willie was mighty suspicious. But we fooled him. That's the important thing. Yeah. And we gotta keep on fooling them. Never slept in a bed as grand as this. This sort of thing, ma'am. Uh, Katie. Well, you'll have a wife one day. You'll get used to it. Katie. Uh, Bud, uh, Mrs. York. 
Just a minute, Mr. Bruder. He sees you in that chair, he'll know something ain't right. Quick, get in here. Come on. Uh, you can come in now. Uh, I, I don't uh, want to bother you, but uh, well, I, I wanted to make uh, sure that you, you're warm enough for... Well, it it uh, could get uh, cold before morning. Uh, and it'll pleasure you uh, to know that I'm planning a real breakfast feast for you. I, I've got some new uh, silver that I want to try. Uh, uh, genuine uh, sterling. And, uh... That's very nice of you, Mr. Bruder. That ain't a pretty sight. <laughs> it reminds me of when, uh, when I was young and uh, Marty and me was just uh, starting out. <laughs> well, I don't want to bore you, but uh, you are a lucky man, Bud York, having a woman like you got. Fine woman. Standing. By you. By standing up by you and uh, like that. Uh, you're lucky. Ma'am? Uh, Miss Katie, what what's the matter? There ain't no need in that. Sometimes I that's the only need a woman feels. I know. It's foolish, maybe, to wash away the hurt or, or them dreams that ain't never gonna come true. What, what Pa Bruder said. He thinks you're lucky having a woman like me. Like me. Well, why couldn't it be the other way around? For real. I mean, why couldn't I have a man like you? Oh, Katie, they ain't much to me. You said yourself I was ugly. No. No. All my life, I, I've been walking hand in hand with ugliness. Nobody knows that better than me. I mean... Being ugly is, deep down, a, a terrible, festering thing that can eat the soul right out of a person. No, Huss. You ain't ugly. Time for that now, Paul. The law been here? No, no, no. The law ain't been here. Well, they will soon. Now, I gotta have grub, and I need a fresh horse, Paul. And I need my money, because I'm heading for Mexico. Well, shut up. But don't be jumpy, boy. Hey, you are home, safe and sound, in the bosom of your family. And, well, hey, hey, put that gun down. Hey, that man, he, he's your partner. Partner? Yes. That is Gabe Leroy. Ooh. Hey, don't hey. Don't move. Randy, have you lost your senses? Well, somebody around here has. That's not Gabe Leroy. That's one of them Cartwrights that tracked me down. Now, shut that gun, Cartwright. If that ain't Gabe Leroy, who's that other man? If he's a big fella, Paul, he's the other Cartwright. The one that put me in jail. 
They took me in with lies. Rotten lies. Paul, the three riders come in. It might be the law. Hey, Randy, what's going on here, Paul? Well, don't just stand there. Cover them. Uh. Uh -oh. You know what I'm saying? Two of them's law. The other one's Ben Cartwright. Oh, I've been a blind fool. Any chance to get a meal? No. How about a cup of coffee? Boys start celebrating early around here. Late, master. I'm still working on last night. <laughs> it's 15 cents. Yeah, yeah. Take a change. That's right. Looking for a man named a Bruder. I was told that I'm Never heard of him. Could be the wrong town. Yeah, or a cover up. Well, whichever they sure don't like strangers. I'd say. It sorrows me that you were in on this. I took you for a gentle lady. She is a lady, Bruder. She wasn't in on it. Leave her alone. Oh, don't forget it was your sons that brought her here. None of that. Well, too much talk. I got lawmen down there, and I got to be moving. Yeah, go down, boy. There ain't nobody in that saloon going to tell the law anything. Oh, that's better. This coffee could stand up without the cup. It's the truth. A little sugar might help. How many? Give me two. Thank you, Benny. It's new. Sterling silver. It's strange. You two got me into this mess. Sure strange, ain't it, Joe? Man digs his own grave, buries himself, and then blames the shovel. There's gonna be a grave right enough. Two of them. Randy! Randy, that's wild talk. You know I don't approve of killing. Neither do you. Hey, yes, yes, yes. You go downstairs and take a look at the street. If you see him by sneak in, yeah. Now, what are you going to do with these three? And the law, how are you going to get rid of them? I'm thinking on it. I have been robbing for 35 years, never missed a trick. And I ain't ever killed nobody. Randy, maybe you ain't dumb, but you sure are slow to grasp. Got the money, took a little luck, but we got it. Well, that's the best news I've heard in weeks. Ms. York here was a big help, Paul. This is my Paul, Ms. York. Ms. York, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Mr. Van Cartwright. That's right. Uh, these two, they your boys? Yes, they are. Well, you raised them right. There's uh, no use of us uh, waiting until they fetch out Cass and Willie. Uh, we're going to jail. We might as well get started. 
It's Sorrow's week. I didn't do a better job on you. I'll get the other two. Yeah. Well, New York, I, I didn't feel like I could tell you before, but I can now. Your husband didn't run out on me. We got him tied up in my lion shack. We're going to take him to the law. That means prison. Probably. Well, it might be the saving of him. I'm going to hope it is. Yeah. Well, I, uh... I guess they're waiting on us now. Hope things go better for you from now on, Katie. A man wanted for murder in Prince River. He's a Mexican. He's around here close. Appreciate it if you keep an eye out for him. Well, Lee. Gracias, senor. Sheriff, fresh hoof prints going up that way. Eat up. We better go back home. I think we ought to keep looking. So do I. Folks back in Prince River ain't gonna like it if we show up without that. Well, I'll explain it to him. Him? Owen Driscoll. He's the only folks we have to worry about, isn't he? the sheriff just call me friend I know you I don't know him and I'm still waiting to hear what you have to say I better no one Aranda lies Aranda Vicente Aranda the sheriff he was Mexican once but no more he, he thinks like a gringo he smells like a gringo No offense, amigo. I only mean that. I know what you mean. I killed a man. That much is true. A drunken lepero named Skills. One of one of Driscoll's gunmen. Driscoll. 
Owen Driscoll? Say, you know him? Yeah, yeah, I know. There were four of them. They were trying to burn my house. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it later. Right now, let's get you to the Ponderosa so I can get a better look at that arm and take care of it, huh? Hold up, Chuck. Now you got more than one eye. What you need now is plenty of rest. I think not, amigo. I don't think Mr. Cartwright likes a wanted man on his roof. Let me a little food and a horse, and I will remove myself from your ranch. You're in no shape to ride. Well, if you, if you cannot lend me a horse, I will walk. and the others came to my rancho last night and tried to burn me out. Why? They are Driscoll's men. He told them to. Driscoll? Owen Driscoll? That name has a bad taste in your mouth, no? You know him? Driscoll Mining, yeah. He operated in Virginia City a few years back. Now, why does he want to burn you out? He wanted my land. Mine and the land of all the Mexican rancheros along the South Fork of Prince River. Driscoll wants to build a dam. He said the town would buy my land, our land, for 50 cents an acre. It's not buying, it's stealing. See, that's what we said. We say, you, you want to build a dam? Build it in the North Fork of the river. But Driscoll says no. That was his land, and he would not sell. Then it all started. They killed our vacas. They trampled our crops. They tear down our fences. And then they say that Ramon Cardenas is to blame. He, he once wrote for Juarez. He's a, a troublemaker, a terrorist, a revolutionist. And then the word goes out. Get Cardenas. And last night, last night they tried. I sure appreciate you dropping by to see me, Zach. I didn't think it was no surprise. Deputy Brady come out by my claim, said you want to see me. I'd forgotten about your claim. How you doing out there? Ah, if it was any good, somebody would have stole it by now. It pays for my bacon and beans and a little more. Well, I'm going to open up a new shaft in Driscoll number two. Need a powder boss. Interested? 75 a month. And I'm three years older than I was when you fired me because I was too old. Well, I'm four years wiser, Zach. Learned there's no substitute for experience. That I've got. 85 a month. You hired yourself a powder boss. Say, Zach, I understand you were driving by the Cardenas place last night when Jess Skeels got killed. Yes, sir. Well, the boys who were with Jess said that Cardenas uh, started to shoot at him for no reason at all. Is that the way it was? 
Wiltshire? Now, Zack, you know how I feel about Mexicans. Most of them are good people. Well, that's why I supported Vicente Aranda for sheriff. But this Cardenas, he's a troublemaker. Always has been one. You know, if he has his way, all the decent, law-abiding, hard-working people in this town are going to lose everything for want of water. Well, it was kind of dark last night. You must have been close enough to see who shot first. Gardenus, or Skeels and the others. Well, who was it? It was Cardenas. And when they saw that Skeels was dead, the others rode off to get the sheriff. I, I didn't want to run. I want to stay with my wife, Sara. She's going to have a baby soon. She begged me to go. She was afraid I would get killed. Oh, with the sheriff, eh? Aranda is Driscoll's criado, his servant. He made him sheriff because he thought he could talk us into selling our land. But I must say one thing for Aranda. He knew better. He didn't even try to talk to us. This, uh, this other fellow, this Zack Toller, what kind of man is he? He used to work for Driscoll, a uh, dynamite, no more. He works a mine down the road from my ranch. And you're sure he saw what happened? And I'm sure of something else. He will never admit it. Why should he? An old man, a gringo? He has no reason. Ramon, I'm going to Prince River. Nobody's going to railroad you to the gallows. But you got to promise one thing. You stay put right here until you hear from me. Understand? Sí, señor. There's a lot of open country out there. A lot of open country where a man can hide, Mr. Driscoll. And the next Juarista, like Cardenas, sure knows how to use it. He could hide behind his own shadow. Now, you made the right decision, Vicente. Of course, it would have been better if you could have brought him back to stand trial, but it may work out anyway. Now that Cardenas isn't here, I think the other rancheros along the South Fork will uh, listen to reason, don't you? I hope so, senor. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Ben Cartwright. Está bien, Sara. Es un amigo de Ramón. Come on. I am Miguel Rojas, a friend of Ramón's. Miguel? Ramón asked me to come by to see if you were all right. You have word of Ramón? Yes, he's at our ranch. How is he? He's fine. His arm. Oh, it's going to be all right. He asked me to tell you that. Oh. Aranda. Buenas tardes, señora. ¿Cómo está usted? Rojas, I know. But who are you? Ben Cartwright. I've heard the name from Virginia City. Yeah. What brings you to Prince River? Business. What do you want, Aranda? You're under arrest. Arrest? For complicity in the murder of Jess Keels. If you're thinking about giving me any trouble, I assure you I won't back off. There will be no trouble. I will go with him. 
Sheriff Aranda is determined to dig his own grave with his people. And if he wants my help, I will be happy to give it to him. If you're hiding Cardenas, you're making a big mistake. If you're looking for Toller, a quarter of a mile down the road, the first trail to your right. Thank you for the information. I will stay so they do not burn this house. If you will help Ramon, we will all pray for you. Adios. Adios. We're going to talk about what you're doing prowling around my claim here. I just told you I came here to have a few words with you. Well, I'm a miner. You want to talk to me? Why didn't you look in the mine? Well, I looked around. I didn't see any activity. You didn't look in the mine. That's where the work's done. Anybody with any brains at all would know that. Yeah, you're right. I, I admit I was wrong. I apologize. But I sure do want to talk to you. You want to talk? I don't. And I'll thank you to get on your horse and get off my claim. Ramon Cardenas asked me to come here. Uh, you heard me. Come on now and get. I'll do that. Change your mind. I'm at the hotel, Prince River. Come in, sit down. I was just about to come to see Why you. Why did you arrest Cardenas' wife? I thought that was the right thing to do. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. She helped her husband escape. She may very well have been the one that fired the shot that killed Skeel. But that's not the real reason. <laughs> no, you're right. It really isn't. I've known Cardenas for a long, long time. He loves his wife. She's going to give him a child. So I thought that perhaps well, you if thought I... that if he hears she's been arrested, he'll come and give himself up. He'll try anything to get her out of jail. I wish you'd talk to me about this first. Did I do something wrong, Mr. Driscoll? Ah, uh, you're new at this job, Sandy. Still some things you have to learn. Why, Carl, sometimes it's best not to push too hard. I don't understand. Well, for example, Cardenas convicted himself when he ran, didn't he? Yeah. All right, so what more are we going to accomplish by having him surrender and stand trial? I'll just keep the ranchero stirred up. Oh, I'm not saying he should get off scot-free. I only say first things first. And getting that land along the South Fork is what the folks in this town want more than they do a hanging. Hmm. Well, well, well. Perhaps I should release the woman. A little late for that. 
We don't want to give the rancheros the idea we're backing down. Now, all I'm saying is that if you do get word from Cardenas that he wants to make a deal to free his wife, you let me know so we can figure the best way to handle it. Understand? I understand. I'm sorry if in some oh, way I... forget uh... it, Vicente. No harm done. No harm talk. You gonna talk to me? I was hasty with you, Mr. Cartwright, but always did have a short fuse, any little thing, and boom. I'm trying to say I'm sorry, but you ain't making it any easier. You saw us shooting. Cardinal's place, yeah. Up till that happened, I never. Got one howdy a year. Now I got important people talking to me. Gordon the Cardinus. Skills and the other shot first, and you saw that. Is that what you want me to say in court? I want you to tell the truth. You gonna offer me a job? Clearing land on your ranch, maybe? Blowing stones? No. Money, then. You gonna put something in my pocket to help me remember? No money, no job, no bribe. I was bribed. Feller gave me a job. Poured me some of the finest whiskey I ever tasted. And I sold out. Man, to do that's too small to look a snake in the eye. I've been hating myself, Mr. Cartwright. I didn't want to lie, and I didn't dare tell the truth. Why not? Because I want to go on living. Big man that was there when Cardenas got away. That's him, all right. Good. The truth is, Scale shot first. And I'll say that in court if I can get out of this town alive. You'll get out of this town alive, I promise you that. All right. But I don't want to talk to you again till court time. I might not get there. Who is it? Oh. This is uh, Mr. Tolas, my son, Hoss. Oh. Howdy, Mr. Toller. Ready? Man, you're a big one. Yeah. I'm beginning to believe that promise. Saw the shooting. He's going to testify that Cardenas is innocent. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I came to get Mr. Cardenas' wife. He don't want to stand trial unless he knows she's going to be safe, and I figured I'd take her back to Ponderosa. No, you can't. She's been arrested as an accomplice. I'll go back to the ranch and talk to Cardenas. You look after him, see nothing happens to him. Right.
I knew for you two gentlemen. You got trouble, mister. Is that a fact? That's a fact. You have a problem? No, there's no problem, uh, Sheriff. Well, then move along. You heard me. Move along. You too. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cartwright. May I see your gun? There's a law in this town. You can't carry a loaded gun without written permission. You're under arrest. Let's go. I do not trust him. Oh, sure, he's brave enough now. But what will he be when he has to get up in court with Driscoll and Aranda sitting there, not taking their eyes off of him? Hmm? And even if he said the truth, who will listen? Who will care? When is Hoss coming back with Sarah? Sarah's under arrest. Sarah? What for? Well, according to Arandis, she's mixed up in the murder of Skeels. I must go back right away. Yeah, Arandis probably figured you'd want to. What do you mean? Well, he's not interested in Sarah. He just wants to make sure that you get back there so you can give yourself up. Well, it doesn't matter. I must go back. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. If Arandas wants to make some kind of a deal, why don't we let him? Find Zach's body? Nope, and I don't think we will. Not enough for a funeral, anyway. Terrible thing. How do you suppose it happened? Oh, it's hard to tell. You know how he used to go plumb loco every time he drank? With all this dynamite around here, anything could happen. Any reason to believe it wasn't an accident? No reason that I can think of. <laughs> I know that. That's why I brought my family here, so they would not burn your house. 
Well, I'm going to surrender if you'll release her. They will hang you. But first, there has to be a trial. And Mr. Cartwright has a promise from Zach Toller that he will tell the truth about what happened. What's the matter, Miguel? Toller is dead. Convenient accident, Sheriff. Convenient? Toller dying just after you decided to tell the truth about the gunfight out at Cardenas's. I understand he already told the truth to Mr. Driscoll. You may go, Mr. Cartwright. What about that law against carrying a loaded sidearm? Well, I decided not to press the charge. I see. Primarily because there ain't no law against it, is there? You just didn't want me showing up at Toller's at the wrong time yesterday, did you? I'd keep opinions like that to myself if I were you. Is that a warning or a threat? You can take it either way you want, Mr. Cartwright. But take it. Mr. Cartwright, I saw you talking to your son. I suppose he told you. Yes, he told me. Well, what can I do for you? I want to see Mrs. Cardenas. We don't keep women prisoners here. She's under guard in the room in the hotel. Why do you want to see her? I think you know why. Yeah? I suppose I do. Cardenas sent you to make a deal. He'll surrender if I release her, right? Well, isn't that why you arrested her? <laughs> well, more or less. There's one more condition. You deputize an upper cardinal's friends to guard him. We don't want any accidents of the kind that happened as I told her yesterday. Nothing's going to happen to Cardenas. I'm afraid your word isn't good enough, Sheriff. Either Cardenas gets his deputies, or you don't get Cardenas. That's up to me to decide, Mr. Cartwright. That's right. Looks like you're going to have some help making a decision. Deal. You want to exchange Cardenas for Cardenas' wife. Sounds like a pretty fair exchange. Oh, there's something else. They want me to deputize some of Cardenas' friends so they can protect Cardenas. It's all right with me. I don't want anything to happen to Cardenas before the trial. You? <laughs> no. But, uh... But what? Well, I've been thinking about Zach Toller. But we didn't find a trace of his body after the explosion. What if he wasn't at the mine yesterday? 
sure he was. He had to be. If he was still alive, he'd have shown up here by now. Unless the Cartwrights are hiding him to make us think he's dead. Then to spring a surprise when he goes on trial. in this. Mr. Driscoll, you know, I, I could be dead wrong about this. We might just be borrowing trouble. You have any idea where Cardenas is now? No, but I'm sure that if we follow the Cartwrights, we'd find him. No. I want everybody to know you were in town all day. We'll handle it. Brady. You're going to need these. Thanks, Sheriff. Now, come on. As soon as you've surrendered to Aranda, I'll telegraph Charlie Dawson to Virginia City. We'll have him come here to defend you. Who is he? He's a crackerjack lawyer, one of the best. He saved a lot of men in the gallows. Probably the best lawyer in the territory. It is not the lawyer that Ramon has to worry about, senores. It is the jury. Twelve gringos with a rope ready. The best lawyer in the territory or in the world will not save you, Ramon. Change your mind. Get away from here. Aranda is bluffing. He will do nothing to Sara if you do not surrender. I'm not so sure. I am. Miguel. Would you be just as sure if it was your wife? I will get Ricardo, Tomas, and some of the others to help guard you. If Ramon is tried, I am tried. If he's guilty, I am guilty. If he's to hang, I too will hang. You had no right to make this deal for me. It's the way Ramon wants it. I don't care. I will have no part of it. It is not up to you, senora. How soon will you be back? In an hour. Yeah. Oh, please, don't let Ramon do this. It's his decision. I don't believe that. He'll tell you that when he sees you. But let me go to my husband. Let me speak to him. You will stay here until he surrenders. Senor, I know how you feel. But please believe me, it'll be all right. All right for whom, senor? I don't understand, Aranda. What is it you don't understand, senora? How a Mexican can help the gringos rob and cheat and murder his own people. Senora, this is a gringo world. A gringo world with gringo rules. You can't win by trying to change them. You win by learning what they are and playing the game a little bit better than the gringos do. That's all. But to betray your own people. My mother was an Apache squaw. My grandfather an Irish buffalo hunter. Who are my own people, senora?
They're heading for Cardenas' place. Well, they have to come back this way. We'll wait for them here. sure taking a long time. Maybe they ain't coming back this way. They'll be along. amigos. You're surprised, no? Oh, well, Mr. Cartwright. My house is the white adobe at the end of town. You'll find Zach Toller there. Will you please bring him to my office? I sure will. Thanks. Get up. I took him there just before the dynamite accidentally exploded in the mine shaft. What are you trying to do, Vicente? I'm placing you under arrest for attempted murder. Mr. Driscoll, I adjusted the sights of the rifles I gave you and Brady. You couldn't have hit a man at 20 yards, much less 300. But you tried, and we have witnesses. Bueno, muchachos. Vamos a la casa, todo está bien, todo está arreglado. Así que muchas gracias. I've been waiting a long time for this. If we had known, we could have helped. The other rancheros and I. <laughs> You're still thinking like a Juarista. You can't fight men like Driscoll this way. No, he's right, Ramon. You have to fight men like Driscoll through the law. I know sometimes it looks as if we don't have too much of it, but we do, and we get more all the time. You gotta use the law, not guns. But men like Driscoll use it too. It is their law. Not if we do not let him have it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ready to go, Paul? Right with you. Amigo, I'll be back with Driscoll's trial. Don't you worry. Adios, Senor Cartwright. Adios. My friends, best of luck. Muchas gracias. Adios. See you at the trial. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. 
Dios. country. Want some more coffee? Yeah. I still think it's pretty hot. Howdy. Howdy. We help you? What are you doing here? What's it look like we're doing? You got business here? We're just riding through, looking at some timberland. Well, as long as you're just riding through, just keep riding. Hey, you don't mind if we finish our coffee first, do you? I don't mind. <laughs> Joseph. Better take his advice. Joseph. By the way, Joseph, uh, you make a lousy cup of coffee. <laughs> Standard trees. Enough timber there to shore up every mine in Virginia City. We sure could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snow did these trees a lot of good. Have to do some thinning over here. Yeah. Fine stand. Better get along. I sure wish we had a little time. Wouldn't mind doing some fishing on that lake down there.
Pa. Pa. Fucking hear me. Hmm? Where's it hurt? My back. I can take it easy, lie still. Can you move your head? Just easy. That's it. What about your hands? Your arms. That's good. Move your legs. Put your legs. Take it easy, but that's gonna have to last you a while. Yeah. Listen. The horse is all right. Well enough to run off. Yeah. Make a good saddle horse. Once you get to learn who's the boss. Yeah, so you told me. <laughs> we'll leave the canteen here where you can reach it. Here's your gun. Uh, I know you're hurting, but you're gonna have to lie still and just take it easy while I get back. Joy, I think I can make it up the hill and just rest for a little while. Well, there's no way you can get up that hill, and there's no way I can get you up without help. I need some men and a wagon. There's got to be some ranches between here and town. I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh, I'll be waiting here for you. Sure ain't going anyplace. Somebody's coming. Just listen to me. Get off my property now.
All right, son, let's get back to work. Down a little. Down a little. That's it. By yourself? Yeah. What's your business? I need some help. Found the help. Look, Mr. Believe me, I'm not looking for any trouble. It's, it's my pa. There was an accident. I need a wagon, a block and tackle, and a doctor. There's one in Grand Four. If you hurry, you might catch yourself. I could use that wagon and team first. Somebody to help me with it. We can't help you, mister. What kind of brand is that? It's Ponderosa. We're from Virginia City. What about the wagon? What'd you say you left your paw? At the top of Wheeler Ridge, at the bottom of a bluff. Couldn't move him. What happened to him? I think it's his back. I sure could use some help. Back, huh? <sighs> My wagon would be too heavy to go up Wheeler Ridge. What you need is a lighter wagon and a good team. I got the team by the over Stover's place today. He's, he's plowing. Could you get him? I expect so. How long ago would this happen? I don't know, two hours. You're not thinking of helping him, are you? Pa, you can't go. If anything happened to you in those hills, it'd be weeks before we even found you. Look, man, my father's only eight or nine miles from here. Look, what is this? I'm just asking you to help him. Now, hold on. Maybe she's right. I don't know you're not lying to me. You could be working for the Dawson Cattle Company. Look, mister, I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't have time to argue, you know? I need the wagon, and I need the team. Now, I'll rent it from you. How much do you want for it? You mean you're going to try to bring up that bluff all by yourself? Well, it looks like I don't have much choice, doesn't it? Well, now, simmer down. Let's see here. Now, if it's his back, why, well, it's going to take at least four men to bring him. Oh, you can't go. Now, you simmer down, too, honey. You go in the house and get some blankets and a medical chest. But, Paul, you... Now, you're you... wasting time, Martha. Now, get it. I don't suppose you'd mind if I uh, kept that pistol for a while, would you? You'd be my guest. You'll find some rope and tackle out back of the house. I'll go fetch the team. I'll be back in a little while. Thanks. to get Stover to go along with us, but he said he saw some of Dawson's men in the valley this morning. He's too afraid to leave his place. Martha, get out of here with that medicine. We gotta leave. What about this Dawson? Why is everybody afraid of him? Well, I never met him personally, but uh, he's the head of a big cattle company. They used to lease this whole valley for graze until the government turned it over to homesteaders. He didn't want to give it up, huh? <laughs> That's right. Now, he don't seem to think much of us folks, so he's... Hired himself a bunch of men to try to run us out of here. He's not fussy about how he does it, either. Yeah, why don't you give me that medicine? Let's get that wagon. Give me a leg up. Where do you think you're going? With you. Oh, no, you're not. It's too dangerous. Well, if it's too dangerous for me, then it's too dangerous for you. Give me a leg now, up. Now, hold on. You know that horse ain't saddle-proof yet. If you're going to go, you'll go with him. He sure thinks a lot like a man. We'll stop our boss place to pick up a rig. Maybe he and his son will go along with us. Like he brought company with him. 
Wait a minute, Pa. Ain't that Mr. Thornton and uh, Martha? You're right. Better be a little more careful. Wouldn't want anything to happen to her, would we? No, sir. true what Joe says about his pa. It's gonna take one of us two to get him to that mountain. I don't mind you using the wagon, Ed. But me and my boy are staying here. If what he says is true. It still could be a trick, you know. Dawson's got his eye on you. That's just talk. Oh, no, Ed. You know yourself, most of them cowboys that ride for Dawson don't know nothing about cows. All they're waiting to do is get us out in the open somewhere or away from our homesteads, and you especially. It may be. But, but don't you see, Tom, we just can't keep hiding in a hole. We've got to come out and face them sooner or later. I prefer later. Well, I can set stuff. We're ready to go. I'm not going. What about the boy? He ain't going either. I need the help. We'll still need those planks and the block and tackle. And the planks are around the side of the house. And that block and tackles over by the trees where we was pulling stumps. Yeah, I remember. Pa's letting you go? Yeah. Ain't that kind of dangerous? It'd be just as dangerous to stay at the cabin by myself. Well, there's no need for you to go. You can stay here till they get back. No, I'm going. Why? Because he needs me. Besides, we can't all stay where it's safe, Brian. Somebody's got to go. Sorry I can't help, but it just ain't safe. You do whatever you think is right. Maybe they didn't tell you about Dawson. Yeah, they told me. Then you understand why I can't help. No, I don't. I'm going with him, Pa. No, you're not. I made up my mind. I'm going. It's the only right thing to do. All right, son. We'll both go.
Dawson's man now. Don't fret, honey. Martha, we gotta get him to the house. Give him a hand, Brian. Don't touch him! This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. You're trouble, mister. I knew it from the minute I saw you. Now get out of here. Go on and leave us alone. She's right, son. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do to help. Joe. I thought I told you to keep moving. It was an accident. My paws hurt real bad. Ain't that a shame? What uh, were you doing with them nesters? I was trying to get them to help. Well, that'd be too much like work for them. And what about you? Huh? Look, I need the help. I'll make it worth your while. How much? Just name your price. Oh, say ten dollars a man. You've got a deal. Hey, them's pretty good wages, even for you, Bill. What do you say, Frank? Let's go, Joseph. say stop, we stop. When I say go, we go. Look, I told you, I'm paying you for this. At, uh, Ed Thornton. Are you a friend of yours? Can we talk about it on the way? Well, I think we'll talk about it now. You, uh, you like Thornton? Yeah, he was gonna help me. 
Van said, do you like him? We got along well enough. Well, suppose I told you that, uh, what was his first name? Ed. Ed. Suppose I told you that Ed Thornton was a no good yellow troublemaker. I don't know what you're getting at. Just like to see what sort of stuff a fellow's made of. Look, I don't want to quarrel with you. You say what you want to say. I don't care. Hey, boy, don't you know who you're talking to? Of course he does. Everybody in this part of the country knows Frank Wells. You say it now. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow troublemaker. Go ahead. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow. No? Sing it right off. Ed Thornton is a no good yellow troublemaker. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Joseph. You Cartwrights don't have much backbone. Let's go. it would be. I really thought it just come across my mind. Maybe you don't have any money. Don't worry about your money. I've got it. Now, how do we know? We don't know you from a kick in the teeth. That's right. We better see it. Right, there's $40. That's more than enough. $40? Just about right. You got yourself a deal. Now, let's go. Let's go. Good shape, does he? Yeah, he looked a little better last time we saw him. You know what? He's a lot bigger than I remembered. Now that you mention it. You know, Joseph, $40 for hauling a man that size up this hill. Sure don't seem enough money. Look, I gave you all the money I've got. Just funning, Joseph. Easy, easy. Good and secure. Get some beef on the end of that rope. I'll guide the sled. All right, you ready? Okay, start hauling them up. We done our $40 worth. He's your old man. You get him up. Ha, ha, ha. 
You made me drink a while back. I tasted awful. Well, that's a good sign. Anybody thinks that medicine tastes good, is bound to be sick. You did all the right things, Cartwright. If you tried to move him before you strapped him to that board, he might have been crippled for life. How's his back? Well, it's not broken. He could wiggle his toes until we got his boots off. He jumped real good when I stuck that pin in his leg. Why'd you have to stick him so hard? Why not? Well, it hurt him. It's supposed to. Same as medicine's supposed to taste bad. Now, don't you go telling me how to run my business. You run along and let that man rest. You mind if I worry a little? Not at all. It'll make you feel better. It's not gonna do him any good. Now, what about Ed Thornton? How's he getting along? Why are you interested? He was trying to help me when he got shot. Well, he'll have his arm in a sling for a couple of days, then he'll be all right. Well, whatever he owes you put on our bill. I'll put it on anybody's bill, as long as I get paid. Don't worry, you get paid. Well, it's good to hear that doctor say he's going to be all right, ain't it? Yeah, well, I thought his back was broke for sure. You should have seen a fall he took down that hill. Yeah, well, he's going to rest easy for a while now. Whatever that doc gave him really not... Hey. That's them. That's Wells. Wait a minute. Just give me a beer. Let's let the law take care of this, Joe. about a man named Wells, Frank Wells. Oh, you're Cartwright. Norton told me all about it. Coffee? No, Wells just rode into town. He's in the saloon. Yeah. Well, you might just well sit down and relax. Look, I've been through this before. Them old studies are just too scared to speak up in court. Well, you said you talked to Thornton. What about him? Oh, Thornton's smoky enough to testify all right when he's up and around. The rest of them... Who cares about the rest of them? Wells shot Thornton, and Thornton's willing to testify against him. You saw it? No, I didn't see it. Nobody ever does. Thornton was struck down mysterious by some bullet that come whizzing out of nowhere. Oh, I could arrest Wells, you are more than happy to. It's a waste of time. It's Thornton's word against Wells and his men. Look, I've been up this road before. Down it, cross it every which way. Make arrests, come to trial. Rascal gets turned loose for lack of witnesses and then laughs in my face on the way out. The Wells took $40 from me. I'll testify against him. All right. He stuck a gun in your belly and took $40 from you. No, he didn't stick a well, gun. He picked your pocket. No, he didn't pick then my pocket. Now, what did he do, Mr. Well, Cartwright? if you be quiet for a minute, I'll tell you. I gave Wells and his men some... Oh, way. hold it. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First you say he stole it, now you say you gave it to him. Which is it, Mr. Cartwright? I paid Wells and his men $40 to help me. They didn't do it. That is not a criminal case, Mr. Cartwright. That is a civil matter. Of course, you can take Wells into court and try to get your money back if you want to. Forget it, Sheriff. 
Thanks a lot, Sheriff. You've been a big help. She was right in the first place. That sure was a waste of time. Yeah. I've got an idea. I'm gonna go to the saloon and talk to Wells. You bring the sheriff over in about five minutes. Joe. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do anything. I haven't got a gun. I just want to talk to him. Well, make sure that's all you do is just talk. Yeah, make sure you bring the sheriff. How's your daddy? Joseph. He's all right. You see that? You didn't need us. You managed all by yourself. Now I got some help. Boy, when the son came along, gave us a hand. Should have stuck around to see that one. You didn't miss anything. You know, I'm kind of glad you stopped in, Joseph. I've been sitting here thinking, wondering if maybe there's something I forgot to take this afternoon. I don't think so. You got all my money. All you left me with was my boots. What size boots you wear? I don't know. They look about my size. It's a nice looking boot. My old boots are getting kind of shoddy. Why don't you take those off and toss them over here? Why don't you just come over here and get them? Why don't I take them off your dead carcass? I think you'd have a little trouble doing that without your two friends along. It's gonna take more than a nice pair of boots to make a man out of you, boy. Well, and you just come take them. Oh, I'm gonna love this. Some kind, of, some kind of charge for shooting a man who doesn't have a gun, Sheriff. That's, that's mine you're holding in your hand. Yeah. We call that attempted murder. Well, don't tell me you can't find a witness that'll testify this time. Oh, I think we can manage this time, Mr. Cartwright. Come on. I thought you took... 
told me you were just going to talk. Why don't you shut up and go get the bartender? I'll buy you a beer. It's my brother, Hoss. This is Ed Thornton and his daughter. He's the fellow I was telling you about. Yeah, Mr. Thornton. Mr. Thornton, happy to meet you. Hello. I'd like to thank you for getting these folks to help our Paul. Well, the pleasure was mine, believe me. How's the arm coming? Oh, <laughs> it's improved a lot, especially since I heard Wells is in jail. Yeah, we'd be happy to give you a hand out at your place till he gets better. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, Tom Boyle's son said he'd uh, be mighty glad to come over and help out. I kind of feel like I owe you. No. Your account is paid in full. Look, I'm sorry about the way I acted and those things I said. You had a right to expect help. Forget it. We're both worried about our paws. Say, how's your paw, Joe? Hey, he's coming along fine. Doc says we can move him today. We're going to be heading back. That's sure good to hear. Well, listen, huh? If you folks ever pass through this valley, be sure to stop in and see us. I, I got a feeling this place is going to be a lot friendly from now on. We'll do it. Take care. Goodbye. Ha! Yep. Yeah.